Bethel's revival is in the air. It's a very good album. Talks about being led out. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land. And I'll never will forget you. I'll sing the going forever. The glory of your love. You stepped into my angels. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom. Into the promised land, I never will forget you. I'll sing of all you've done. We followed up forever by the fury of your love. The God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You have made me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Fight for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have been through the sea, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the song reminds me of different things that's going on in the world, but how God's delivered us. You know, sin, Egypt is looked upon as as bondage being in slavery to sin, and so 
the song is very, you know, Egypt. You took me out of my Egypt. You brought me into the promised land. You took me out of my sin and destruction and you brought me into the promised land. I don't have to be in Egypt anymore. The only thing that stays in Egypt is your mind. If you don't let your mind be renewed with the word of God. Let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every person that's listening now and that will listen in the uh, rebroadcast. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for, for this day. I thank you for bringing us into freedom. I thank you for setting us free. I thank you for your deliverance today, Father God. I thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. Father God, I just give you honor. I give you blessings, Father God. I worship you. You're so worthy to be praised, Father. And I magnify your name. And Father God, we bless you, we adore you, and we honor you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to talk about, we were talking about some, uh, uh, we were talking about character last week. And so we're going to talk about uh, more character, and we're going to specifically focus in on the Beatitudes, but we're gonna focus in on peacemaker and what peacemaker or peace encompass in the body of Christ. And so uh, I, I woke up this morning and um, when I was praying and I was asking the Holy Spirit, what was I to minister on this morning? And um, he spoke to me and he said uh, about peacemakers. You know, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Well, people think that when you are a peacemaker, that you are passive, that you, um, that you can be walked over, that you uh, don't have any boundaries, that you're, you're, you're supposed to take all these boundaries off so that you can negotiate what peace is. So before we get into what all peace is, I, I want us to look at that peace and the a peace and a peacemaker specifically lives within the boundaries of what the word of God says. If you search the gospel and you look into the gospels, the um Jesus was in a time where he lived, he was in a time of unrest. You had the Jewish nation looking for a Messiah that was going to come back like a king and that was going to take over what was the kingdom of Israel. And so they were expecting the Messiah to come and overthrow, overthrow the, um, the government and take back Israel from the Roman government. But never once did you hear Jesus speak against the Roman government. In fact, when he was asked by the Jews because they were trying to trick him, he says, no, you have to render what is Caesar's is Caesar's and what is God's is God's. So he, he, was, he never came against what was government, but he said, listen, he said, come and uh, be peacemakers. In other words, in the in the Hebrew, it talks about it talks about peacemakers are those who are are they love peace, they love to make peace. But see, peace has specific boundaries. I'm gonna walk you through pretty much the book of Exodus really fast up until the time they um up until the time they crossed the Red Sea. Really quick, we understand that in the times that there rose up a government that did not remember Joseph. So see, there was a, a boundary that was there. You had the Egyptians lived in um, one portion of Egypt and they were given the land of Goshen. And so they lived there peaceably with the Egyptians. But then there rose up someone who forgot about Joseph, forgot what had happened to the, uh, the nation, forgot how the Israelites had changed the Israel. 
had changed Egypt, had caused where Egypt didn't fall and didn't die in famine. And so it rose up this, this, um, this Pharaoh. And so this Pharaoh decided these people have become so great that they can overtake us. So let's make their life miserable. And, and he, and basically slavery happened. So in that process, they start killing babies to make sure that they don't have a lot of people. And they, they don't, they don't kill the, the female children. They kill the male children because let's face it, the seed is in the male. The woman just receives the seed and she gives birth. So here it is. They see that Moses was uh, favorable. They send Moses, put him in the uh, river. The princess, Pharaoh's daughter takes her, takes him and he becomes a son of Pharaoh, but his mother nurses him. So you, you have that part, the 40 years of Moses' life that where he was trained as an Egyptian pr prince and he was trained to write and read and do history and, and all this stuff. And he fought for Egypt and he fought in wars and he did certain things. He was a prince of Egypt. And so when he goes out and he, and he has a burden for his, his people, he remembers at 40, he remembers. There's a whole generation that's died off. He remembers, oh, I, I, I'm actually Hebrew. So he goes out and he sees them and what he does, he kills the Egyptian. He broke peace at that point. He could have did it better. He was in government. He could have acted better. He could have did something better, but he didn't. So he had to leave Egypt because they wanted to kill him. God didn't want him killed because he had a job for him. So here he is when he comes back and he's 80 years old and he sees the burning bush and God says, I am that I am. And he says, I'm going to deliver my people from Egypt because I, I heard their cry. And it goes on and he goes into Pharaoh. Now, how come, how come you, ha you know, we always look at this as such a marvel that Moses was able to go into Pharaoh's court. It wasn't, it wasn't really that marvel. He understood how the court operated. He understood how you went before Pharaoh. He understood how to talk Pharaoh's language. He understood how to be presented in court. He understood this. He lived there. He, he was part of that court. They had to receive him. He was still considered a prince of Egypt. And so here he is. He goes in. See, God sets you up in places and educates you in order for such a time that he needs you within government or needs you within a, a certain position so that you know how things operate so that he can use you to change whatever's going to happen. And so here it is, Moses goes in and he tells Pharaoh, I want you to, God, I want you to let my people go. They want to go out and worship. Give us three days and let my people go. Pharaoh goes, not happening. He says, okay. And he calls the first, first plague, first plague to happen. See, God peaceably went into Pharaoh. Peaceably demonstrated signs and wonders through the staff. Peaceably asked for my people to be let go. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And so the peace dictated that now God has to send back a response. And the response was, he was going to turn the Nile River into blood to show them that your God is not, is not all powerful. I, the God of Israel is all powerful. So he says, this is what's going to happen. And so when he demonstrated it, then Pharaoh goes, what's happening? So when he goes back in, he goes, I want you to let my people go. Let them go and worship for three days. Or, and the next, the next uh, plague is going to happen. So he gave the terms of peace. And so it goes on down to the 10th plague, let my people go, or this is going to happen. So the last plague that happened, he caused the death angel and the firstborn was killed. 
And so Pharaoh let his people go. But in the process, he realizes, and God hardened his heart, he realized, wait, I gave in to their peace boundaries. I gave in to them. I can't do that. So let me go after them. See, that's what happens. Good morning, uh, Pastor Ladon. That's what happens when, when you are given peace boundaries, then the enemy comes in and he goes, he tries to disturb or push back those boundaries that's in your life to disturb your peace, to cause you to react, to cause you to get mad, to cause you to to fret, to cause you to worry, to cause you to have anxiety, to cause you to have things in your life that's not in the word of God. So when the Israelites are standing and the Red Sea is in front of them and Egypt's and um, Pharaoh's on their back, they're like, what are we going to do? You just brought us out here to die. There's no place to go. And Moses makes this big um, statement, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Well, you know, salvation also means also has in there as a definition, peace. See, salvation means peace, prosperity, wholeness, wellness, and so forth. Peace means prosperity, wholeness, wellness, be tranquil, to have national tranquility. So there's a peace that happens that when it all kind of goes along together. So here it is when he said that and God says, use what's in your hand. See, God's given you the weapon of peace in your arsenal to use in your behalf of your situation for you to speak. And so those speaking of those weapons in there causes you to not be moved by your circumstances and not to be able to look at what is going on. So Moses spoke. When he spoke, the Red Sea opened and they went across on dry land and then Pharaoh tried to come and what did he do? He died. Was it that God killed him? Well, yes, he, he went against the peace boundary. The peace boundary was let my people go and let them go worship, let my people go. You didn't wanna let, he didn't wanna let his people go. So God says, okay, then you're non-conforming to my peace boundary or my preference of peace, you have decided you're not. I've given you over 10 plagues to show you that I am God. I annihilated all your gods. I caused them that where they were not going to be in uh, force, I, I showed you that there wasn't. So now you don't want to listen. You want to still follow and pursue my people, still put them in slavery, still put them in bondage, still give them where their mind is not at peace, still cause it. You violated the peace boundary. So now the water is going to come over you. The washing, my word is going to come over you and it's going to kill you because the consequences of your sin is now caught up to you and the wages of sin is death. And so Pharaoh died in the water because see the water also represents memory. It represents baptism. So when, when the Israelites went across on the water, they were remembering what all God did and they were being baptized in the newness of going into the promised land. So what does that have to do with us? I, I, I'm glad you asked. So here it is. When... In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, when he says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who bring peace. And uh, in, um, uh, oh, there's all kinds of scriptures in peace. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some scriptures real fast. When, and the ones that uh, is really keeping, that's really keying in on me, is that um, Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 14. Let me tell you how important peace is to us. That the peace of God causes us 
to live in it completely. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Peace, we know, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Peace is what we are to operate in. Peace, as I said, um, gave before, is a state of national tranquility, exempt from the rage of havoc. Peace between individuals, harmony, security, safety, prosperity, uh, because peace and harmony makes and keeps things safe and prosperous. The Messiah is peace. So here it is. The, the Bible talks about in Ezekiel uh, 34, verse 25, 26, it says that he gives us the covenant of peace. So Jesus becomes our covenant. He, he broke covenant that we can live in peace. So, but uh, in the Holy Spirit, we're to walk in righteousness, right standing with God. We, are to, we have a boundary of what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do. We're not supposed to walk in sin. We're supposed to be in right standing with God. Peace, we're supposed to walk in tranquility and not let things around us. So peace in Romans 2.10, it says, But the glory and honor and the peace to everyone who does good to the Jew first and to the Gentile. So we are to have, we are going to have glory, we're going to have honor, and we're going to have peace if we walk and everything that God, everything that's good, it's favor among us. We discussed this last week. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So peace is already granted to us. With that peace, that can come trials, tribulation, and persecution, which brings about the character. The character is for us to operate in the peace. We have peace boundaries. See, Jesus is peace, but he has a peace boundary. His peace boundary is, you receive me. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man's going to come to my kingdom or to my father, but through me. And so if you don't accept me and accept what I did on the cross, then you're not going to live in peace forever and you're not going to come into my kingdom. So therefore you're going to be put into damnation. But if you receive my price, you receive what I gave to you, what I am willing to do, my conditions to my kingdom and my kingdom is you receive who I am, what I did on the cross, how I was resurrected, then I am going to promise you, you're going to live in peace. You're going to be in right standing and you're going to have the joy of my salvation to no matter whatever happens. If you decide not to do that, then guess what? You're not going to be in peace. You're not going to have tranquility. You're not going to be in right standing with me. And Romans 8 and six, it says, for the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Now, I like, I like what it says in the, uh, the passion version of this, of this. Let me get there. It says, for the mindset of the flesh is death, but the, but the mind set controlled by the spirit finds life and peace so when your mind is not operating in the spirit realm and your mind is dwelling on fleshly things on carnal things worrying about stuff worrying about different things then your mind is thinking on things of death if you are concerned about how things are going on around you and not paying attention to what the spirit of God is saying and you're not operating in the spirit, then what's going to happen is you're going to only think of dead things. You're going to only think of, of, of wrong. And right now, there's a lot of wrong going on in the world right now. There's a lot of things that are coming out culturally and, 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 and stuff that is not of God. And so if you look on those things and if you form opinions based on what you're seeing in the news media, you can be plagued with fear. We've seen that with COVID-19. We're seeing that now with this movement. You can be plagued with fear. You have to live within the confines of the boundaries of the cross. 
And the cross says that we live in peace with all. We accept all. If you are my brother and my sister, then I accept you because you're blood bought and you are a covenant. The Bible says in 15 and John 15, it says that you will know me. You will be my, they will know you that you are my disciples by the love that you shed, that you share with one another. If I say that I am a Christian and I am walking in the in Christ and I am spirit filled and I'm walking in Christ, but I don't love you because of whatever you're saying, whatever your skin color is, how you look or whatever, then I am not being a true Christian or someone walking with God because I am to love you because you are my brother. And for me to stay in peace, I have to operate. And not only do I have to operate, I have to pray for you. I have to, if you are in need, I have to give you what you need. I have to operate in that love. I cannot be partial because I don't like the way you look or, or, or like what you believe. I have to love you. I have to love you. I can't. Now, if you are in the world and you are not operating in the spirit and you're not operating according to the word of God, then I can love you. I can love you in your sin, but I am to provoke you to the love to, to God and bring you back to the sun. And you have to come into the boundaries of peace. That's my peacemaker. My peacemaker is I'm offering you Christ. I'm offering you the love of Christ. I'm offering you the love of God. And in the love of God, you have all things. You're free. Everything is going to happen for you. And God's going to bless you. That is my offering. If you're homosexual, I love you in the way you are. It doesn't matter. But you have to come in the confines of the Holy Spirit and according to the word of God. That is our measuring stick. That is our plumb line, is the word of God. We cannot, cannot differentiate from the word of God. Nothing in this world is going to change the word of God. Everything here will pass away, but God's word will not pass away. Why won't it pass away? Because it's Jesus. Jesus is the word. The word died and the word came back alive and it stayed alive and it's now sitting on the right hand of the father. It cannot be the differentiated. You want more of Jesus? Study the word. You want more of Jesus? You start praying in that prayer language over the word that you're reading and watch what God will do. He will cause the love of God to come and terminate from you. That's what he does. That's how he operates. That's how he goes. You don't have to be stagnant and you don't have to be without borders. Your borders of peace is what the word of God says. That's your boundaries. You know, in, in, in Ezekiel 47, it talks about the river of God. And it talks about how it flows and it comes and it's like it gets ankle deep, then it gets knee deep, then it gets waist deep and then it overtakes you. And it says about the trees that line upon that, that bank and it has the trees for the healing of the nations and the fruit that comes off of it for them to eat. Well, you know what that bank embankment is? That the river's not overflowing it? That bankment is the word of God. That's the boundaries on how the word is going to flow and how the word is going to be rushing out and rushing in and coming. And you, as a tree of righteousness, is planted in that bank and your roots are are going deep into that water and that water is giving you that water of the spirit, that water of glory, that water that washes you, that water that's filled even with the word. It's coming, it's washing you, it's giving you nutrients and it's causing from the dirt, from the water, causing you to grow up strong so that when people need peace, when people need love, when people need joy, when people need you to be patient and long suffering with them and need you to have a temperance, you can have a temperance because you have 
a boundary of the word of God that causes peace to operate in your life. Peace. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace that, that cannot, there's, there is no law against the peace. No law against peace. It says in Romans 8, 15 and 16, for you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as uh, sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. In the translation of uh, the 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 Passion Bible, it says, you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Man, we should understand that living in Southeast Louisiana with the Catholic Church. Leading you back to, into fear of never being a good enough. Let me tell you something. There's no amount of duty or what you call duty that will make you righteous before God. God wants true worshipers that's going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so no amount of religious duty, no amount of how much you raise your hands, how much you say hallelujah, how much you do all that, that's not going to get you into heaven and that's not going to please God. And if you feel like you cannot please God and that you're not doing enough, you're not praying enough, you're not doing this and that, then that is the enemy condemning you. Or maybe you're operating in fear. Or out of religious duty. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance. Full acceptance. There's no boundaries. I have accepted you. You know, when, when you're accepted, people love you. They dote on you. They, they care about you. They, they, they honor you. They do things for you. <coughs> unfolding you. Unfolding you into the family of God. And you will never... <coughs> Excuse me. And you will never... <coughs> my allergy medicine and you will never <coughs> can I have a cough drop please a minute y'all And you will never feel orphaned. For as he arises up within us, our spirit joins him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. Try this again. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you. That's like putting you in to fit in the family of God, and you will never feel orphaned. For as He arises up within you, our spirits join in in saying the word of God, tender affections, beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. And since, you, since we are true children, we qualify to share in his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs with him, with God himself. And since we are joint heirs to Christ, we, are, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. And we will experience 
being co-glorified with him, providing that we accept his suffering as our own. If you're feeling like you have been abandoned, if you're feeling like you're an orphan and that God is not giving you or you are not accepted, I want you to know that you are accepted. That's in the boundaries of peace. That's in the boundaries of the covenant that you have with God. He accepts you. We hear it as he gives his beloved. We, we hear it as he is our Abba Father. Everything that Jesus did, everything, was to turn us around and to present us to the Father and say, Father, I brought home your children. Father, I brought home your children. I now am placing them back in your kingdom. And in your kingdom, they're going to have righteousness. They're going to have peace. And even though there's going to be tribulation all around them, even though <coughs> they're going to have <coughs> trials, I'm going to let them stay in my peace that passes all understanding. And I'm going to cause them to know that you're their father. And I'm going to cause them to know that they don't have to be moved by this world. That if they believe in me, that they're going to always have peace. And they don't have to be confused. They don't have to be in uproar. They don't have to worry about what's going on around them. That if they seek my face and they know who I am, I have given them peace that they can lay down and they can cause, lay down and, and be in, in peace and be able to sleep because I'm going to protect them. That's why Paul said, pray for government. Pray for the surroundings around you so that you can live peaceably with all men. He never said overtake government. He never said overtake any of them. He just said, pray for government so that you can live peaceably. If those people hate you, then pray for them. Show them kindness. It we heaps coals upon their head. That's what happened in Egypt. It heaped coals upon their head before they left. Everybody in Egypt was coming out and giving them all their all their gold, all their silver, uh, everything. They they ransacked Egypt. They had all their money when they left. They went in. They were slaves. They came out prosperous. They had enough gold that they built a calf and tried to worship a different god. They had enough gold that they were able to make things in the uh uh in the tabernacle and they were able to do things god called a nation in one day and funded it in one day god can call you and he can fund you in one day he can cause the ransom of the people that have been hindering and causing you pain to pay up in one day what is it in your life that you need peace you don't have to have you can have peace and it can operate within the boundaries of the word. And when the enemy comes in, when the enemy comes in, you can tell him, this is my peace. This is my boundaries. I am not moving off of this. I'm not going any further. This is where I live. This is where I'm going to stay. You know, when things happen in my life, sometimes I literally stop. And I take a few minutes and I, I look. And if it is so disturbing that my peace is disturbed, I stop. I start praying in the spirit and I allow the Holy Spirit to walk up, to wash over me. And then he tells me what to do. 
what is your peace disturbance? Don't let your children be your peace disturbance. Don't let your husband be your peace disturbance. Don't let circumstances around you be your peace disturbance. God will set the set everything free. You know, I tell the story, and people say that I I, I I'm a very um, patient woman. Peace and patience kind of goes together. But <clears throat> we had we had we rescued a cat one time. And in the process of this cat being rescued, she <clears throat> had a broken um, pelvis and stuff. And we prayed for her and, and God healed her. But the vet examined her and said she would never have any kittens. Well, <clears throat> after about a year and a half, this cat, I guess God working, caused her to be healed. And she started having kittens. And so we started trying to get them fixed. And every place that we turned to, nobody could help us. And they wanted to charge this exorbitant amount of money to fix these cats. And so we kept praying. Nobody would take them. We had a flood of 2016 twice. No, every place. And if you look now, places are filled with animals. Because people do away with animals. And so I began to pray and ask God because, see, it was disturbing my peace. And, and what had happened is, is that some of the animals that were coming because we had a doggy door, they would come through the doggy door and they weren't even our animals. But because what happens is, is that when they know that there is a place of peace and safety, they will come in. And, um, I mean, one time they had a raccoon come through our doggy door and it just kind of like backed up and went back out before the dogs and cats got it. So it's not just that. And so we kept praying and finally we had an organization work with us and we got the last remnants of all the cats spaded and fixed. God caused our peace to come about because their answer to it is you get them fixed and release them back into their natural habitat. And so that's what we did. They stay outside, come in, it's, it's, it's no big deal. But that's what happened. See, God always has an answer for your problem. What is it that you need an answer for? Even if it's as trivial as stray cats coming in your house and trying to give birth god has an answer and he'll put a, a pledge about you and he'll cause you to have that answer what is the answer that you need maybe your children are not acting right maybe the things around you or what's going on in government is causing you to have issues what is it exactly let god come in and wash over you Become the peacemaker because the peacemaker is going to inherit the kingdom. The peacemaker is the one that goes and prays and reminds God of his word and said, what's going on in the world today is unrest and in my nation and it is not in agreement with the peace, the, the boundaries that you say of peace. And I want the peace to be restored. And so right now I ask for the uh, officials to have a backbone. I ask for the officials to come up and, and enforce whatever laws are being enforced. I ask the officials to come in line with Romans chapter 13. I ask the officials, I ask you to have the officials come in line with Romans chapter 13. I ask for the officials to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit and have on the armor of light and come about and do what you would have them to do. I ask for the Holy Spirit to give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I ask for a visitation of the Holy Spirit among our government officials from the uh, federal government to the local, to the state, to the local governments in the name of Jesus. I ask that all chaos, all, all chaos, all tyranny, everything that's going against 
our laws and nations that is uncalled for to be brought down in the name of Jesus. I speak peace to this situation. I speak peace to these people. I command that chaos and murdering spirit to be to dissipate. I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I command it to come down in Jesus name. Father God, we repent for not praying. We repent for not lifting up our leadership. We repent, Father God, for not loving one another the way we were supposed to love one another. Father God, we repent, Father God, for not doing the things that we're supposed to do in the spirit so that we can live physically and on this earth in peace. Father God, we we ask that, Father God, that you forgive us, that you come in and you heal our land, that, Father God, that you have us operate in peace, that, Father God, that you have us operate in the love of God. Father God, I ask that you baptize each and every person in, in your love, Father God. That you cause the love of God to flow over them like never before. Father God, I ask that, Father God, if they're walking in chaos, if they're walking in unrest, that, Father God, that you even have the peace of God right now flow through my hands out into the, to them, Father God. Lord, those that are not healed, I ask that you heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father God, I ask for deliverance for them of things, of fear. I bind fear in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose a hold of them right now in Jesus' name. I come against every phobia, every point of fear of not being acceptance, accepted. I come against that orphan spirit. I come against... The things that are cause you not to be accepted. The spirit of rejection. I come against it now in the name of Jesus. And I speak acceptance to you. I speak wholeness to you. I speak the peace of God to you. I speak the love of God to you right now in Jesus name. And Father God, I thank you for this. I thank you for this right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that everyone under the sounds of my voice, they will flow in peace. The peace of God will just flow upon them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Wash over my spirit, wash over my soul. Peace, wonderful peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Wash over my spirit, wash over my soul. Peace, wonderful peace. God bless you. We love you. We have some things that we're planning, some things that we're putting back together, some planning to uh, restart service in person. Uh, we love y'all. We bless y'all. Please like and share. Somebody else may need to hear about peace. Someone else may need to, to, to experience the peace of God. We're praying for you and we love you. If God lays it upon your heart to plant a seed into the ministry, we have all the stuff at the beginning of the, uh, in the caption between PayPal, uh, text to give and so forth. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. It's so pretty outside. It's going to be a wonderful week and we love you and we hope to see you again. Be blessed. Amen.